In 2019, everyone's favorite anthropomorphic hedgehog will dash his way to theaters. But is the world ready for a Sonic the Hedgehog movie? Currently, the prognosis is looking pretty grim. Let's break down the reasons why the Blue Blur's movie looks like a big mess. Video games are a very different medium than film. Although games can provide the same immersive narrative experience that films do, they're expected to be enjoyed over several sittings in the comfort of one's home. We don't think Hollywood is about to make a 60-hour interactive experience for theaters anytime soon. However, despite consistent bombs, Hollywood seems absolutely enamored with the pursuit of the elusive good video game movie. Unfortunately, there's no such thing. These attempts at adaptations go wrong for many reasons. They have to cut a lot of story content. They can't quite illustrate the role of the player in making choices in a game. They lean heavily on CGI that doesn't always stay true to the style of the game. On top of all that, writers never seem to want to stick with the original concept of the game. Need we remind you of the absolutely disastrous 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie? Where is this place? I don't know, I ain't been to Manhattan a couple of weeks. Must have been a bad couple of weeks. There's no shortage of disastrous video game movies to pick from. See, Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia, Silent Hill, Warcraft, the list goes on and on. None were able to capture the expansive worlds of their source material. Although Sonic's world and story seem breezy enough that a 90-minute adventure on the big screen should be doable, fans are already more than dubious about the possible quality of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. From the moment he hit the Sega Genesis back in 91, Sonic was designed to raise eyebrows. Built to be an edgier answer to Mario, he was a mascot that would appeal to teenagers who totally related to Sonic's impatience and hunger for supersonic speeds. Why can't it be more like that nice boy Mario? Oh! Little brat! Over the years, Sonic's design has changed significantly to suit the many platforms to which he's been ported. He's gotten taller and his legs have gotten longer, but all along he has kept his gloves, socks, and signature shiny shoes. All that stuff? Signature Sonic. The new Sonic the Hedgehog movie poster, however, is a departure from everything we know about the character. The silhouetted teaser by Paramount Pictures doesn't reveal the face of Sonic's new incarnation, but the silhouetted details are… interesting. First of all, Sonic is furry. Like, really furry. And underneath that fur, he seems to be as ripped as any human athlete. Gone are the round, cartoonish gloves, replaced by ape-like hands with an ambiguous number of digits. His shoes are strangely form-fitting and beaten. The reveal was met with large-scale internet backlash. Fans were confused, concerned, and at a loss as how to react. Naturally, many a meme was born from the fallout of what was surely meant to be an exciting unveiling. Many fans' concerns revolve around the realistic design choices behind the newly reimagined Sonic. He doesn't look quite like a cartoon character anymore, partly because the Sonic movie's executive producer, Deadpool director Tim Miller, wanted to go for a more realistic look. Miller explained in an interview with IGN that the production team was focused on integrating Sonic with his human co-stars, saying, it would be weird, and it would feel like he was running around nude if he was some sort of otter-like thing. It was always, for us, fur, and we never considered anything different. It's part of what integrates him into the real world and makes him a real creature. We've seen this formula turn sour, however. Taking beloved characters and turning them into realistic, breathing creatures may actually create a more unsettling dissonance between the real and CGI elements than a cartoonish take would. Just look at the Michael Bay-produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. The brutally realistic style sucked the charm out of the Teenage Turtles and made them grotesque shadows of their former selves. And don't even get us started on Splinter. Oh, the humanity. Movies aren't the only place we've seen failures in blending cartoon characters with realistic environments. In fact, we've already seen it with Sonic. And as much as we hate to remember it, we have to look back at the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog game. While Sega tried to make its hero real and integrated alongside recognizably human characters, things got weird. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Smile. The game drops Sonic into a weird Final Fantasy-like world, adventuring alongside human characters like Princess Elise. The height difference between them is strange, especially with Sonic constantly carrying her around like a groom on his wedding day. The two spark a questionable romance that culminates in a Sleeping Beauty-style kiss, resulting in an image that's hard to erase from your brain. This is terrible! Yup. Sonic 06 has since gone down in infamy. Unable to balance the fun of Sonic against the backdrop where Eggman presumably kills innocents with explosions and robot guns in a terrorist attack at the beginning of the game. We hope that the movie won't fall into the same weirdly edgy realm. But with Sega's darling stuck in the real world, on the run from the government with only a small town sheriff to aid him, there are already some implications that call up painful memories from 2006. Sonic and humans, they just might not mix well. 
So, we understand that the production of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie is going for realism, but fans are having a hard time wrapping their heads around the idea of his legs. This discussion kicked off when another movie poster from Paramount appeared, offering a hedgehog's eye view of the movie's real-world setting. Although we still don't see Sonic's new face, we do get a better glimpse at some of his other… assets. The poster shows speed lines crisscrossing San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge and a pair of legs dangling over the top with a cheeky Sonic was here message scrawled into the concrete. The legs are furry, as Tim Miller promised, but they're also pretty, uh, beefy and strangely separated. Sonic has a serious slide gap that fans have found impossible to replicate. This second poster did nothing to alleviate the anxieties fans were having over Sonic's makeover. One of the film's writers, Patrick Casey, responded to the further with a simple tweet requesting, quote, "...everybody relax." The official Sonic the Hedgehog movie Twitter account made its own response that has only served to reignite the controversy over Sonic's legs. In a shoddily photoshopped image, the most roided out blue legs imaginable stand in red sneakers propping up a sign reading, "Can a guy work out? Be back next year with the hashtag respect the legs. As in character as the tweet feels, we're still having kind of a hard time respecting those legs. What would Sonic be without his arch enemy, Dr. Robotnik, who's sometimes also known as Eggman? The Sonic the Hedgehog movie is set to be filled with action and drama, and the dastardly Doctor is an important part of that equation. Dr. Robotnik is always bent on world domination, determined to shape everything he sees into his own vision of robotic oppression. Typically, Sonic is the one who inevitably thwarts his plans. It seems the movie will honor this age-old tradition. <laughs> Look at you, fighting like you've got a chance to win! It's adorable! Dr. Robotnik, like Sonic, has a pretty iconic look. He's round, like an egg, with a massive red mustache below his tiny sunglasses. There is no real person with those body proportions, but the film still managed to cast the role. Dr. Robotnik will be portrayed by none other than Jim Carrey. Carrey does have extensive experience playing eccentric megalomaniacs under prosthetics, like the Riddler in 1995's Batman Forever and Count Olaf in 2004's A Series of Unfortunate Events. I am your beloved Count. Olaf. But Robotnik is a big role. We would hate to see an A-list actor like Carey bogged down by bad costuming, or a bad script for that matter. Among all the hiccups the Sonic movie is experiencing, we're wondering if Carey's performance might overshadow everything else. Or there's always a chance that we'll be left wondering how the poor guy got roped into such a potential mess. While the upcoming movie might bring Sonic and, in turn, the Sega brand to a whole new audience, the Blue Blur's parent company seems a little worried about a few of the filmmaker's design choices. Producer Tim Miller told IGN, I don't think Sega was entirely happy with the eye decision, but these sorts of things you go, it's going to look weird if we don't do this. What's he referring to? The decision to give Sonic two eyes independent of each other, as opposed to the goggle-like configuration he has had since the 90s. More anatomically correct? Sure. More Sonic? Not really. The original team that brought Sonic to life isn't vibing with the filmmaker's take either. Apparently, they were as surprised as the rest of us that a movie was even in the works, and that their creation would look so drastically different. Naoto Oshima, Sonic's original character designer, wasn't happy with the movie team's realistic approach. He took to Twitter saying, Sonic doesn't need to be designed closer to a real hedgehog even in a live action. Mickey doesn't become a mouse in live action, does he? Other writers and directors commented that they were shocked at the ultra-realistic take on Sonic, with tweets summing up to a collective, whoa, this looks weird, which really doesn't bode well for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. We can see why Hollywood continues to pursue video game movies. A name like Sonic already has an established fan base ready to fill seats and munch on overpriced popcorn. Kids will love it, adult fans of the series will love it, it's a win-win all around, right? Wrong. As it turns out, there is more risk than reward when dealing with a property that already has a fan base. The problem with fans is that they can be, well, fanatical. Some will inevitably consider the source material sacred and see any deviation from what they love as sacrilege. Back in 2010, when Sonic the Hedgehog 4 was set to be released, Sonic fans joined together in protest because they wanted the feel and look of the old games rather than the new direction Sega was taking. They swore that, as a protest, they would buy the first Sonic the Hedgehog again rather than spend money on Sonic 4. Oh, the Sonic filmmakers prepared to face a reaction like the constant criticism surrounding the new Star Wars films? Some fans are no doubt cringing at the thought of handing their beloved, iconic hero over to a bunch of strangers, and we can't blame them. It will be interesting to see the response from longtime super fans once the film hits theaters in November of 2019. There could be a fresh wave of protests, if current attitudes are anything to go by. Considering all the disappointment, backlash, and controversy the Sonic the Hedgehog movie has gotten from just a tiny glimpse of the final product, what will become of the film? 
Will the production listen to the warnings from fans and developers alike and make a change toward a Sonic that we know and love? Probably not. The producers seem pretty attached to the idea of a Sonic that is less stylized and more grounded in realism. Even if the movie is a bomb with video game fans because of this approach, there are sure to be hordes of children dragging their parents to see it. Though the Sonic the Hedgehog movie looks set to crash and burn, this disaster is unlikely to spell death for future video game movies. There are many more video game movies currently in various stages of production, and we are sure to see more questionable takes on old favorites. Every studio seems confident that they will be able to break the curse of bad video game movies. Maybe one of them will, but we're not so sure that the Sonic the Hedgehog movie will be the one to do it. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.